Hi, everyone. Welcome to our November Art Matters talk. My name is Kristen Butler. I'm the Director of Programs here at the Delaplane. Um, today's talk is going to be given by our 2020 National Juried Photography Exhibition juror, Regina DeLuise. And the exhibition that we'll be, be discussing today is part of FOCUS, which is the Delaplane's biannual celebration of photography. And I'd like to share with you, before we get too far along, a message from our FOCUS sponsor, PNC Bank. Welcome, and thanks for joining us as we launch FOCUS with juror Regina DeLuise and her Art Matters Artist Talk. I'm Fred Gaynor, Senior Vice President and Regional Manager of PNC Bank. PNC is proud to return as a sponsor of FOCUS, a month-long celebration of photography. And right now, I know you all are as anxious as I am to hear from Ms. DeLuise as she speaks about her selections for this year's FOCUS exhibition. I also want to thank the Del Plain Art Center for all you do to celebrate the work of artists. Those who create art in every medium and those who support arts education for students of every age. I encourage you to take advantage of all of the FOCUS events this month. Most importantly, let yourself be inspired. Pick up your camera and see what comes into focus for you. Thanks, Fred, and thank you to PNC for your support. Thanks also to the galleries and businesses here in downtown Frederick who are participating in focus with their own photography exhibitions this month and to Frederick County Public Libraries who are co-hosting three virtual satellite exhibitions and artist talks. Speaking of artist talks, in two weeks, we will have another Art Matters talk with the three solo artists who are now on exhibit here at the Delaplane. You can find out more about all of the FOCUS exhibitions and programs on the FOCUS page of our website, and I'm going to drop a link to that in the chat here in just a moment. And now our exhibitions manager, Corey Fry. Hi, everybody. It's really good to be with you all. Thank you for tuning in. Um, I do want to encourage everyone, if you're local to the area and you have the opportunity, we are open. Um, and, you know, we're, we're implementing some social distancing practices. You do have to wear a mask when you come in. But we're open um, and we've got all the work for this exhibition on display. So we really encourage you, you all to come out uh, and check things out in person. We've got some other great exhibitions going on as well. So um, if you're unable to come out, I do want to throw out there that we also have virtual exhibitions for all the exhibitions that we have on display in person. Uh, those can be found on our website and Kristen's gonna put a link in the chat over here um, just to give you guys the option of checking things out online. I know um, some people can't travel the distance, and uh, so you can, you can definitely check things out. And we've done our best to, to represent the work well uh, there and, and showcase all the great work that's come in. Uh, before we get started, I do want to mention briefly, as we go over some of the work in the exhibition, um, there is a figurative work that contains some nudity. If, if anyone is a... Um, is sensitive to that sort of content that will be coming up on screen in a little bit. And so just wanted to throw that out to you guys. I wanted to say too, it has been just a real pleasure to work with Regina DeLuise. She's been uh, very kind and generous with her time and she's really provided a lot of great feedback. She's been great to work with. Um, so before she comes up, I want to give you a little bit of her background. Uh, Regina DeLuise is a Guggenheim Fellow and full-time faculty at Maryland Institute College of Art. Her work is represented in private and public collections, including Museum of Modern Art, Metropolitan Museum of Art, the Art Institute of Chicago, San Francisco Museum of Modern Art, the Houston Museum of Fine Art, and the Canadian Center for Architecture in Montreal. She's worked at the Daniel Wolf Gallery in New York City and uh, is the co-founder of Elm Street Arts, a cooperative gallery in Manchester, Vermont. 
Uh, Regina was born in Brooklyn, New York, and received her BFA from SUNY in Purchase, New York, and her MA from Rosary College in Florence, Italy. Regina, thank you so much for being here, and I'm going to open it up to you. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you so much for inviting me. This was, uh, it's been really a pleasure to work with you and um, have an opportunity to, to look at all the work that came into uh, this, with this jury call. Um, I um, was really very excited about finding the exhibition within all that beautiful work. So um, I suppose it's best for me to start off to just expand a little bit on um, my life in photography and it's kind of that now, <laughs> you know, it's, it's a kind of a life in photography. I've started, um, you know, making photographs when I was in college. So it's been um, 40 years and I, um, the first part of, my career, I really was focused on making work, showing work. I was in New York. I was working at Daniel Wolf Gallery, which was a really quite extraordinary experience for a young person kind of coming into the world of photography. Daniel uh, was, at that time, there weren't very many photo galleries in New York and um, he represented, you know, Joel Sternfeld and uh, Helen Levitt and, you know, so people on both ends, people who were sort of the tr traditionalists and the people who were coming in, you know, Lee Freelander and uh, Gary Winogrand used to, you know, shoot in the park and then kind of wander into the gallery and sit with us. It was, it was sort of ex a wild extension of my, my studies and, you know, um, it was really very incredible. But what I found out right away was that I really wanted to figure out how to get back to making my own work the center of my life, you know? And I think that as, you know, young artists come into the world, it's really everyone's challenge. It's the, how do you, how do you do this thing, you know, that you love and you have such passion for and, you know, earn money and, you know, make a living and grow, your life in a balanced way. So, you know, I sort of hit that, you know, hit that right away and uh, ended up going, I, what I wanted to do most was travel to Italy and be sort of immersed in the place where my family is from. So I found a program in Italy that was really appropriate for me. And, um, you know, that's, that branch of my work, this idea of photographing in the field has remained really important to me. So I do feel that, um, you know, it's uh, one of the things that I've really devoted my, my, um, my life to, you know, the other part of my work that is also very strong is the idea of the figure, the figurative work, the, the, the relational aspects of photography, you know, the, the connectedness that um, it allows you to have with your world, you know, and really kind of make sense of your world. So I see those as two very um, specific kind of threads in my work. Um, I've always worked with an eight by 10 view camera. Um, so, and I'm still working with film. I shoot eight by 10 film. And uh, for most of my career was making palladium prints which um, uh, is a alternative to, well, now we say, you know, we say alternative, but now it's like alternative to what, you know? At that time it was alternative to silver. Now the gamut runs the silver gelatin, black and white print. You know, now photography encompasses so much. So the idea of saying alternative is not really that relevant, but it's a handmade uh, emulsion coated on paper sensitive to ultraviolet light. And it's a very beautiful, very tactile kind of print, which was always very important to me as a photographer. Um, you know, the idea of making something, like when I moved from drawing to photographing, it was a little bit of a surprise because I'm not really that interested in technological things and machines. And so I missed the sort of the, the tactile aspects of drawing. <clears throat> so palladium was just a beautiful thing to find because I could um, make choices about paper and material and um, 
So um, that is really the, the, how I produced my work for many years. In the last five or six years, I've begun to scan my eight by 10 negatives and print digitally um, to you know, experience a larger print. The eight by 10 palladium remains a contact print. So, you know, I'm carrying around this giant camera and I'm, I'm like, you <laughs> know, these tiny prints is like, it was time for me to really like open things up and really understand um, more about all the variations and qualities of the, um, the, the archival pigment print, you know, so that's been now running concurrent with, you know, running parallel to the Palladium printing. So um, the, so really didn't come to teaching until, um, you know, quite a bit later, I, I was living in Brooklyn and a friend of mine asked me if I would teach his Palladium class at Pratt. And so, you know, I didn't go to grad school in Italy to teach. I went to grad school in Italy to kind of buy time to work. You know, that was really my, you know, my thinking. <clears throat> so I um, started teaching at Pratt when I was still in Brooklyn and really found it so gratifying, you know, um, being an artist is, can be a very solitary experience and, um, you know, that's fine for me. I sort of work well in that way. Um, but um, teaching became, you know, instantly, you know, another aspect of my practice, really. Um, the dialogue with the students is, I find, uh, you know, continually, um, you know, exciting and uh, stimulating. And, the, you know, I learned, I feel like I learned so much from them and, you know, and I hope they learned a lot from me too, you know. Um, and I think, you know, it's a really, it's a really interesting, um, it's the other side of the coin to this idea of travel and, you know, putting my camera on my back and kind of throwing the, my hat over the fence and going to find it and see what I'm going to encounter as I photograph that I really don't, um, that's really how I spent most of my time as a, as a young photographer, really discovering work in the world um, and not being sure of like what kind of solid ground I might find. In fact, the unsolid ground I found pretty compelling. Um, and uh, so, you know, teaching has a, a different kind of um, solidity to it, you know, which I also appreciate. Um, so um, I feel really lucky. I feel, you know, incredibly lucky that I've been able to sort of have, have I found the balance, you know, I really feel like I found the balance between, you know, satisfying my own sort of uh, creative impulses and my need to kind of be in the world in this way. And then also have this very sort of grounding experience of working with young artists who are finding them, you know, their own road. Um, so, you know, and that's a thrilling thing. Um, you know, when you see that click and when you see the work happen, it's, it's quite, um, quite exciting. So that's a kind of a, a pretty quick view of 40 years in photography <laughs> and anybody can ask any questions that they would like. I'm happy to fill in, but it really, um, you know, what, what I wanted to say just about the, the idea of seeing that spark in, you know, in each of my students' experiences as they kind of move into, you know, kind of a scary territory. Being an artist is, um, it's not a, a known quantity, you know, and um, I don't think it's, you know, I, I don't think it's, um, for the meek of heart in a lot of ways. You know, I feel like you have to be brave. You know, you have to be willing to not know exactly what's, you know, um, going to occur, you know, for some, for the work to really be alive, you know, to your audience, to you and to, you, to your audience. So, you know, the idea of, um, of that uh, is kind of at the heart of, of my teaching, uh, you know, I understand um, what people have to kind of put on the line, 
you know, in order to really, you know, pursue their work. So, um, and I must say that the work that um, came into this exhibition or came in to be juried was really fantastic. You know, it was a really rich range of work. Um, and I, I was really excited by that. I, I think that photography in a certain way has always been a little bit misunderstood. I've always felt that, I would always say that like I'm an artist and then I would say I'm a photographer. You know, even 30 or 40 years ago, people had an idea of what a photographer was. And I think that um, I needed to just sort of distinguish um, that for myself. And I think that now photography is a little bit misunderstood for different reasons, you know, that we all have a very good camera in our pocket, you know, that everyone, it's always been that photography has always been very accessible, you know. Um, but how do you, how do you, you know, connect with your own vision? And how do you connect with your own material? And how do you connect with the, the kind of technology or camera that really is the most direct, um, you know, gets you to your vision most directly, you know? So um, I think that one of the things I love about photography now is that it truly encompasses so much, you know, that it's not black and white versus digital. That's like a very old story at this point. Now, elements of sculpture are um, often incorporated into a photographic process, uh, practice. Um, you know, the idea of um, experimental photography, um, you know, the idea of composite work, the idea of, um, you know, using very different medium uh, has made it a very expansive um, um, medium. And I found that to be true in the work that I was asked to consider for this exhibition. You know, it was great. Um, so, you know, there's always the challenge of only you know, there's limitations in terms of space and, you know, it's always hard to sort of not include work. Um, but I think that um, what I find very interesting, um, because I've worked in a gallery, uh, you know, worked in a gallery early in my life and then later on, you know, uh, started this cooperative gallery and work with the seniors at MICA and we're always thinking about exhibition and we're always thinking about installation. And, you know, there's a way that the exhibition itself is such an exciting um, work. You know, it's its own work of art. It's like the work and then there's the, the, the story that the greater story that gets told. Um, so looking through all of this beautiful work that's so, so such a great range, um, I find it very interesting to find the connections, find the work that speaks to um, contemporary photography uh, and all that could encompass, and then how those images can relate and speak to, you know, the other. Um, so, I, I found um, calling the images from that larger group in a way um, a very natural experience. It just kind of, it's kind of in there. You just kind of have to find it. Um, but like I said, there's work that's of finest quality that doesn't often make it in because of trying to find um, the thread that will make this particular experience of walking into that gallery make you know the most sense. So um, I found it very exciting, the scope, really beautiful. Um, I, in looking at all the work, um, I was very aware of really wanting to represent um, as, as much of that range as I could in terms of 
um, you know, black and white and color, experimental images, um, you know, the, the full gamut uh, was something that I really wanted to try to make sense of and include because I think that we need to do that now if we're thinking about photography. Photography has never really been one thing and now it's, you know, it's much more a complicated story and rich story. Um, so I hope that the exhibition, um, you know, I think it looks great. And I think, you know, I haven't been in the room yet, but I will. Um, but I think, you know, the link and the virtual exhibition really does kind of, you know, it looks like I'd hoped it would. I think it's quite, it's quite wonderful. Does anybody have any questions? I would love to hear. I'm not looking at the chat myself, but um, would this be, a, is, it, is there anything that uh, we could talk about here now before we get more specific about the works? We have one question that I might have to field, Regina, um, mm -hmm. that is just how many entries were there and how many photographers? Mm -hmm. um, we had about 180 entries um, and that spanned, uh, I, I believe, um, well, that, that, in, that is the amount of photographers. So each en entry was allowed up to three uh, submissions, three, three works in that submission. So uh, about 180 is where we were at for entries. That was to Carolyn Miller. Um, there's a question as well, Regina, on, from Ron Ames. He's one of our photographers in the exhibition. Oh, wonderful. He said, uh, when you come across two images that are technically on the same level, do you depend on your visceral response for a final decision? Um, yes, absolutely, I do. But, uh, you know, and in this context, I, I, as I said, there was that how it related to the other work was also a, a big component. Um, I do have to say that, you know, one thing that's really challenging about you know, during a show is um, not having a broader context, you know, so three images can definitely like in, in a lot of cases really tell you the story, but, you know, I'm, I'm really used to with my students or, you know, being able to dig in. So I feel like sometimes limited in terms of, oh, you know, I wish I could just go really deep in and get the broader sense. Um, but yeah, I mean, the technical, um, you know, and that's not, that's actually a kind of a good point. Like the idea of technical is also pretty subjective at this point. I mean, clearly um, feeling that the artist has full control is maybe more how I feel about talking about the technical part because they may not want it to be, you know, um, a particular kind of, you know, grayscale, perfect black and white, you know, it could be really on a, a far end of experimentation, but like having the sense that the artist, I, if the artist can make me feel confident, you know, I feel like technically that's strong, you know, no matter what it actually looks like. Does that make sense? Yeah, that's great. Um, we have another question from Christopher Schneeberger. He's also, he's another exhibiting artist in the exhibition. Mm -hmm. um, he said, what was the thought process or methodology behind curating the work around the space? Are there like works together or contrasts, some other considerations? I think you touched on that a little bit, but mm -hmm. if there were any other considerations maybe that you were working on. Yeah, well, I mean, I do think that um, all the work for me, all the work that I chose um, uh, was very um, committed work. You know, it, it felt like, you know, the, the, that the, the work had, was, there was really an investment behind it. I felt a lot of power in all the pictures that I chose. And then, you know, again, this idea of really wanting to be expansive about um, process and, um, 
you know, there's something about photography though that um, it has a very emotional component to me. You know, it has it ha you know when a when a photographer is really connected to their subject, like you feel that. So it is like you were saying, Corey, it's a very visceral kind of response at a certain point. And then, you know, sometimes, you know, I had to kind of bring a lot of in and sometimes I had to kind of let some things go too, you know, which is always hard. But um, yeah, I guess I, I feel like um, those are the main considerations, you know, the, um, and the, the sort of thinking about the overall, does this make sense, you know? That's all the questions that we have from folks right now. So maybe we should jump into the awards. So we're going to start with, we're going to start with our honorable mention work, uh, Jenny Roffelson. Um, and this piece was called Always There Where I Can, Where It Can See Me. The third place award goes to Emma Cheshire. And this work is called Father and Daughter. The second place work is from Jonah McCone, and this work is called Cameron. And then lastly, the first place award goes to Sean Dudley, and this is his work titled Narwhal. I'm going to go to the next slide, and here's all the work listed and Regina, if you have any comments specifically. Yeah, yeah, yes, absolutely. I, I, I um, asked Corey if he could, you know, um, show all the work at first before I sort of talked about each of the works um, because I felt so excited about the range um, and what could be represented with these four images, what aspects of photography I hold really dear um, you know, I feel that um, uh, Sean Dudley's piece to me was just absolutely breathtaking, you know, just a stunning image is, you know, really um, iconic is what I would say about this piece. Um, again, you know, not knowing the kind of greater body of work, I don't know what's there, but I was really taken by this in terms of what is possible with, with this figure. You know, it becomes very allegorical. It reminded me of, you know, images from the 1930s like George Platt Lyons or something very classic like Edward Weston. But, you know, this whole idea of the narwhal, which I didn't know what that was. And I didn't know any of the names, but I had the names of the artists. I had the person, the title of the piece. Um, in the, in the medium, um, but <clears throat> it, um, I had to look up what narwhal was and it, it is an actual animal that I didn't know, a toothed whale, but you know, this idea of the mythical figure just was kind of gave me the chills. I just think that's a very beautiful classic image. Um, so, um, but again, I mean, I, maybe any of these pictures could have been the first prize, you know, they were all really stunning to me. And I, thank you for giving me four opportunities to, because do, choosing one would have been very difficult. So this idea of the sort of the iconic image, you know, that's very well placed in photographic history is really kind of what I think I was responding to with um, Narwhal. And then the image uh, Cameron called Cameron um, to me really, spoke to the, the importance um, of what I would say, what I would call social documentary photography. You know, that uh, for me, social documentary is a really broad term. You know, it, it's not necessarily work, um, you know, that happens in, it, it, to me, I think of it as nonfiction, you know. Um, it's, it's, it's nonfiction, it's a way for us to kind of look into each other's lives. And, and I felt that this was such a beautiful, you know, intergenerational image of a black family. Um, you know, and my projection is that it's in America. And I just think in the context of where we are now that like, you know, representation is so important. And, 
you know, for me, it was very beautiful to see this image, you know, and, you know, I, I think, um, especially now how important it is for us to see ourselves in other people, you know, to be able to be empathic and to be able to understand other people's lives. Um, so to me, this just went like right to the heart of what the power of a social documentary type of work could be. I mean, I don't know if this artist would say that they are that or would label themselves in that way. That's not really important to me, but like I said, that's how I was trying to make sense of what I could, um, you know, kind of uh, raise up as, you know, a, a, a sort of contemporary idea of what I find really compelling in, in photography. So I love that image very much. Um, the, uh, Emma Cheshire's piece to me speaks to the poetic in photography, which I must say I have a real <laughs> affinity for, you know, I mean, it's a little bit hard to kind of read and then you kind of find the shadow of the daughter and the father. And, you know, it's kind of the magic of what photography can be, this whole idea that light, you know, transforms the film or light, you know, uh, as seen through a lens is, is magic, you know? And there's a way that that image to me feels uh, like poetry, you know, it's like feels like the complexity and the, um, of what that relationship can be, you know? Um, so I thought that that um, really deserved to be sort of elevated in terms of another aspect, another lane of photography that I think is really uh, rich and important. And then um, the last piece, um, you know, really represents a very important, much more conceptual idea of contemporary photography that is much more uh, kind of reflexive and experiential, you know, this idea of the artists, in, you know, inserting their own self, their hand and manipulating the space and allowing you as the viewer to um, be involved in the making, like it almost that that's how that felt to me, you know, um, it, it puts the artist, uh, I mean, it puts the audience very much um, in the shoes of the puts the audience in the shoes of the artist, you know. So this idea of conceptual, poetic, social doc, and, you know, a kind of based in a really solid tradition, um, it felt like all the work was really worthy of um, e exceptional praise. So that's why I made those choices. <laughs> I mean, look through, do we have any other questions? I would like to just throw out a question to you, Regina, about, you know, we're an educational center as well, being mm -hmm. an art center. Mm -hmm. so we're really interested in how we can sort of elevate people's practice, mm -hmm. help them to hone their craft and that sort of thing. Um, you know, depending on who's on here or who will be watching <clears throat> later, I'm wondering if you just have any thoughts about um, where people can get started if maybe they're a little intimidated by photography, where's a good place to get started or what are some practical steps folks can be taking to, to develop and hone their craft even more? I think that what I was saying before, like this idea of being a bit fearless, you know, it definitely, I mean, it depends. It depends on how you want to engage with the, with the medium and the material. I mean, there are, um, there are many ways to have a life in art, you know, and I think that it's really important to define what that is for you, you know, it's like, do you want to devote yourself? Do you want to, this is your path, this is how you're going to live your life? Or is this something that really is adjacent to your family and your other work and your, you know, so I think that it's different for every person. And I think that that's really probably a really important first step. It's like to understand, you know, kind of why you want to do it. Like, what does it satisfy in yourself? You know, um, I think that um, if you feel like you want to be a commercial photographer or if you use photography as a meditation, I mean, those two things can 
be true, you know, for the same person or, you know. Um, so I think that once you really identify why you want to make the work, that probably some of the intimidation might fall away because that's only your answer. There's no other answer. And um, so then the steps might be um, clearer. And I do think that um, one of the most important things for me always is curiosity. You know, like, what are you curious about? And like, what are you curious about in terms of material? Like object, you know, objects, do you, or, and what are you curious about conceptually? You know, what, how does, what you read come into your mind? How does, you know, how does your, the political climate come into your life? How does your faith or your lack of faith or your relationship, like how does all this stuff kind of, you know, impact you um, in terms of what you want to express? You know, it's like photography or any other medium is, uh, an expression and a way for us to make sense of our worlds and our lives. And um, so there's no way to do it wrong. <laughs> it's like, you know, um, and I think that once people start like making actual steps in that direction, then you can kind of talk more about, okay, well, how do you make that idea more clear? You know, like how do you make that a more direct kind of experience or, um, you know, then I think you can really bring in the more critical, you know, a critical eye in terms of, you know, is that um, too broad? Are you looking at that subject matter in such a broad way that nobody would really know how you feel about it? Like how, you know, how do you make that make, how do you make it about you, you know? So does that, does that answer some of your question, Corey, just yeah. about starting off? Yeah. No, I think that's, I think that's really, I think that's really great. Um, we did have another question come in as well from Dan Myers, again, another one of the exhibiting artists. Um, he said, are you able to make a few observations based on the diversity of what you saw in the submissions about where you see contemporary photography? Um, well, I thought it was, you know, um, yeah, what I saw made me feel like, wow, this is like really spot on because it was, it was not, it was so uh, expansive, you know? So I think that, you know, the idea that um, art making is a siloed experience, you know, is, is really something that, um, certainly it was that when I started out, it was like a photographer was a kind of a photographer, like that's what they did. and. Um, but now it just feels like there's so much more room for a photographer to, you know, and Dan's piece exactly spoke to that, I thought, you know, so um, I think that the work was really reflective of um, the fact that there are fewer boundaries, you know, in contemporary photography, which is certainly my experience, you know, as a teacher and also as a, as a you know, an artist and also, as a person who takes in and views a lot of work, um, it seemed pretty in line with um, con contemporary concerns, you know, and, and also the tradition, you know, which includes the tradition, you know, of the really classic, beautiful black and white, you know, landscape, you know. So, um, Dan, was that a good answer? <laughs> Did you have a follow up? <laughs> No, I thought that was great. Um, oh, let's see here. He said, he said, well said. Okay, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I also, you know, people uh, challenge me or think differently. I'd love to hear kind of what, uh, if anybody has seen the exhibition, I would love to hear what anybody thought if there was time for that. If anybody had any feedback about the exhibition and what maybe was highlighted for the viewer. I don't know if anyone has had a chance to see it yet. You know, just having, while we're, while we've been installing all the work, we've had some visitors coming through and some of the staff coming through um, and just the comments are 
are so are so enthusiastic about all the work. So um, okay. yeah, it's it's a really great show. Um, we have we do have another question that just came through in the chat. Um, Ed uh, Palazinski just asked, uh, "What is Regina's passion?" Wow. <laughs> Um, wow. Well, I think I feel passionate about a lot of things. Um, I mean, I think that having, um, I think having art at the center of my life has um, really focused my passion on um, the creative experience which to me means the human experience you know which to me also means relational you know my you know relationships and my engagement um with the world you know so i feel like um yeah that that if you have a life or i mean i feel like centering my own life in, in art has allowed me to uh, feel passionate about a lot of things, you know? Um, so I can really apply that sense of creativity, you know, on a good day. I, <laughs> um, just by how I am in the world and how I relate to other people, you know? No, that's so great. Um... Ed said, thank you for answering You're welcome. You're welcome. Uh, yeah, so everybody come out and check out the show. Um, uh, doesn't look like we have anyone that's at least said that they've been out to see the show yet. Carolyn Miller did say she'll check it out right after this talk. Uh, right. So we go, we're open until five today. Uh, we'll be open 11 to five tomorrow. Um, come and check it out. I wanna say just thank you to everybody that submitted their work. Like mm. Regina said, um, there, there was so, so much beautiful photography that came through and it is a great challenge with the limits of space and, and that sort of thing, um, to hone it down to, uh, to, to a cohesive show, mm -hmm. um, because it does mean that we end up eliminating some really great work. And so mm -hmm. I want to say thank you to everybody that did submit, uh, we have, Another juried exhibition across all mediums uh, coming up in the spring. And so keep an eye out for that. Um, yes, Denise uh, just asked the question, will the show be online for those of us that can't be there? Yeah, um, earlier in the chat, if you scroll up. Um, oh, and Kristen just posted the link again. There's a link to Prezi. Uh, which is a online platform where we've created a virtual exhibition that you all can check out. Uh, it's, it's a really handy tool just to be able to scroll through the work. You can zoom in on the high res images and get a good feel for, for what's in the exhibition. Um, so yeah, check out that link. Thank you all again so much for, for submitting your work. And Regina, thank you so much just for taking the time for us your, your consideration of all the work was really apparent. Um, okay. it's been, and even in just hearing you talk about it, it was really refreshing to hear you talk about your selection process and everything. Um, let's see, we had another, sorry, another question came up. Will you be posting installation images of the actual physical space and exhibition? We certainly, uh, we certainly can check out, um, check us out on social media. Uh, maybe we'll be posting some things there and, and um, we'll, we'll try to figure out a way to get some of those images to you guys. Uh, I know it, it does help to see it in the space and see how the work collaborates with one another in the space. So uh, we definitely like to accommodate that. And I'd like to say um, thank you to um, you, Corey and Kristen for, you know, doing all that hard work leading up to it and the installation. And I look forward to being in the space and seeing it myself. It was a pleasure to work with both of you. Oh, we really appreciate that. Yeah, yeah. thank you so much. Yeah. Um, so Kristen, I will turn it over to you. Thank you everyone for participating in our discussion today and congratulations to all of our exhibiting artists and to the award winners.
please check out the rest of the focus exhibitions and the programs. Um, every all of that information is on the focus page of our website. And thank you so much uh, to our generous sponsor PNC Bank. Um, like I mentioned, we're going to be uploading the webinar to our YouTube channel. I'm going to try to get it up later today or early tomorrow, so make sure to share it with your friends and your family. And while you're on our channel, check out our other videos, and don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell to get notifications about other videos from the Delaplane. Thank you, everyone, for watching. Thank you, Regina. Thank you, Corey. And hope everybody gets in to see, or as many people as possible, get in to see the exhibition and enjoy this beautiful day.